and to them. So we're, we're going to be here. I have some of the youth with me today. Uh, these two are going to be future preachers of the Word of God. And I know they're going to be shifting the nations and moving things out of the way. So praise God for that. Um, so they're, they're a little nervous, so be gentle on them. Okay, um, I put them on the spot. I asked them uh, last week, I said, hey, I'm putting you in my sermon, so I need you up here. Um, but before we begin, I, I wanted to say we're thankful that um, God has entrusted us to this ministry and that God has brought us here to be the youth directors. And uh, we're, we're praising and pray, believing that God is going to continue to send people our way. So I know that God is going to send the right children to our, our ministry, and we're going to develop them in God's kingdom. Um, so I know that many of you are um, uh, definitely have seen my last sermon, and I guess uh, I did a good job, and the, the plane continued flying, okay? So they asked me to come back again and, and preach for the main service again. So um, we're thankful for that, and I want to give God glory for this word. I know that God gave me this word um, uh, last week, uh, well, a couple weeks ago, and it's just developing it in my heart. Um, this is something that I know that God has an uh, end-time work for us. Uh, that in our season, God is going to develop us, and God is going to develop our, um, our walk with Him. So... Uh, let me go ahead and pray just to get everyone uh, uh, in tune with the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, with this time that we can hear your word, Lord. I ask the Lord that you help me deliver this as, as the way you put it in my heart, Lord, and that we're going to honor you in everything that we do. Lord, we're thankful for everyone that showed up here. Lord, protect them, Lord. Guard their hearts, guard their minds, that they may focus and receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, so um, Pastor Bob uh, asked me to end the series that he was uh, preaching here. Um, he was preaching about blessings and being blessed. Um, he said, he, uh, and is that the reason why I said he said is because I am in the youth ministry, so I don't even get to hear his sermon. But he said that he, uh, he preached on uh, blessing the blesser by praying, by spending time with him and in, in giving, how to bless others with your words, how to bless others with your prayers and your best investment with your money and material goods. That goes to missions and other that other things like that. Um, well, I'll say, God, I, I, I want, how should I end this, this series? And um, my title of my sermon is The Blessed Fence. Okay? Uh, and I want to bring you guys into perspective. Um, uh, Starting with the first family in the Bible. God created uh, the first family, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. In this uh, garden, I want to bring you guys in just using your imaginations as I can as well, um, is having a lush uh, environment, having everything that you want, everything that you need, everything being met, all your needs are being met. Um, in this garden, you have everything that you possibly could use, and uh, you don't really have to do much other than spend time with God. Um, and it was uh, this way until uh, our uh, first family uh, decided to go against God's will. Um, and then we have a, um, in this garden you have in Genesis 3.24, um, it says here, so he drove out the man and he placed cherubims, which are angels, at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree, of the tree of life. So in this image, I want you to, I want you to understand that there used to be no fence. It was, it was open, you can go everywhere. But at this moment in history, you have uh, angels protecting this environment. So no longer could they enter it. So you have this, and you have this uh, downfall. So pretty much uh, everything has been lost, and you are now in uh, a fenceless life where you're um, roaming and you're, you don't have any self-defense. Um, so um, 
In Psalms 8, 80, 12, the psalmist says, Why has thou broken down her fences? Serpents delights to lurk in the crevices of such fences. Um, that is something that we as Christians, you know, we, we deal with uh, when we have a, uh, uh, think about your house. If you go to your backyard, you feel safe. You feel that your fence protects you from any outside person or animal and that you can leave your kids back there playing and, and they'll be fine. Like there's you know, a speeding car, everything will be fine. So that's, that's the mind, the, the image that I get from that, from that psalm. Um, so this is, why have thou broken down her fences? So we are in one garden, in the Garden of Eden, where Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve have been kicked out, and they no longer can return. So from there on, um, it seems like it's hopeless. And we go to, we fast forward to another garden, in this garden, we have Matthew 26, uh, 39. Um, you have Jesus, and he is uh, getting ready, um, and he is praying because he knows that he's going to be betrayed. And he is in despair. He needs um, people around him to be praying with him. And in, in this garden, you see um, Jesus also facing something that he has to make a decision. Um, so from one garden to another garden, you have uh, this, you have this um, symbolic uh, scripture that I want you guys to um, correlate and put together. Um, so Jesus is there and he is, um, he's pretty much uh, in despair and he's wanting us to uh, see how much agony he's in. He has his weight on his, on his shoulder and he is looking for uh, people to support him, and he found none. Um, so this moves us to, uh, this moves us to that garden, and you see Jesus, and he, I can imagine him leaning against a rock, and he's leaning against something, something that has, uh, something where he can lean and pray, and he's there, and he's saying, God, uh, he's talking to God, and he's talking to uh, God the Father, and he's telling him to help him. And then this is what Jesus says when he's speaking. Oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So if we were to look at that, Jesus models for us exactly that that feeling when we are against our will, when we're against, we're feeling big uh, torment in our lives. Um, this generation, we have lost the ministry of suffering. We feel that the moment you feel something is going against what you want or what you need, that you want to give up. You, uh, if uh, the husband came in loud in, in the morning and you just like, you know what, I'm tired of you. And then you, you give up. Uh, you get a medical report, and it doesn't look like it's uh, something that you want to hear. You want to give up. You um, so you start you start seeing that this day and age we start losing the the ministry of suffering, where we are um, no longer what Jesus said, not my will, but your will, Lord. So we have two. I want to show two gardens. Um, in, in this garden, you see Jesus modeling for us how to take God's will. Adam and Eve did not take God's will. They took their will and took that, took that from the tree. So Jesus went in and showed us at the end. He said, here's how you're going to do it. And he gives us that scripture so we can recite it every day. Um, Numbers 22, 24 also, and we're not giving you lots of scriptures, and I know that we're um, we're kind of giving you the background knowledge before we go into the sermon. Um, fences were constructed, okay, and this is throughout generations. And um, this year, I'm working with uh, history, and um, I'm one of my colleagues is here as well from my school, Miss Lowe, and uh, we work together in the history classroom. So we we get we we get to hear history and. 
how it transfolds. Uh, fences were constructed um, to protect gardens, vineyards, sheepfolds uh, from anything or anything that could, could cause harm. Um, but various things could cause that fence to bulge out and fall. Okay, with time, those fences could fall. Um, so we have this, um, you have this, this example of Jesus suffering. And he's suffering, and he's showing us how to overcome the suffering. The, this day and age, we want to hear, uh, give, me, give me the prosperity uh, sermons. Give me the, let me bless you with a house. And we all run around this church. We also have, uh, we also tend to want to hear those type of sermons. But when God says, wait a minute, we have the ministry, a whole, the whole ministry of suffering to teach the church. And I feel this is the part where God put it in my heart to preach to the fountain of life, um, how to uh, go into that ministry of suffering. Um, so we go in here and we, we see Jesus and we see him saying, this cup, let this cup pass uh, over me. He said, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So now that we have been from the beginning, the Garden, garden of Eden, to the Garden where Jesus was, let's kind of rewind. And this is the part where I want us to be for a little bit. Um, the book of Job, Job 1, Job 1, 1. So, and you see it up there on the, on the pictures as well. Um, Job 1, 1. Um, you see Job is, is uh, and we get to see him. So I want everyone to turn to the book of Job, Job 1, 1. Now there was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the, day, the days of the feasting had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he will rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job was, did this regularly. So you see a father, uh, a father that takes time to, to pray over his children, to make sure that if they are off course, if they are doing something that transgress God, the, the Father is there interceding for them. And you see Job's life, okay? And it seems like a perfect ideal life, okay? If I were to say cookie cutter, um, I would say that it's very ideal. Everything's there. The kids, he's prospering. He's doing everything that uh, he wishes he could. He has everything there. Now let's go ahead and say, what about you? How's your life? Where are you in this? Is your life all there? Is it all together? So then you go and you see Job, and you see that he is, um, we enter another realm, okay? I know that many of us like to watch videos and movies where it moves from one scene to the next. Well, here we have this scene now there was a day when the sons of God came to, the pre to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. 